One step closer to becoming an expert in Mac OS, I got three power tips for you. Let me show you what they do. Welcome back to my channel. So what I want to do today is I want to go ahead and show people three different tips that are, you know, really what I would call power user tips that are going to make you an expert in Mac OS. But these are three tips that are super useful and I'm going to show you what they do, but they're, trust me, you stay tuned for the whole video because all three of these things you're probably going to want to use and use on maybe even like a weekly basis. So the very first tip I want to go ahead about, and, and again, these are tips that you will have no idea about unless you actually watch a video like this or you read something because you can't really find them that easily. So number one, if you have Wi-Fi problems or you're, let's say you're in a locked room like I am with a lot of cement walls um, and you want to know how good your signal strength is or your Wi-Fi and you want to know if there's a lot of interference on your Wi-Fi, it's actually built into Mac OS, but it's hard to find. So what you want to do, it's actually easy to find if you know what you're looking for, but it's only one click actually. So what you do is you go over to Mac OS over here and uh, you know the little Wi-Fi symbol in the upper right hand corner? Um, you know, if you click on that right now while you're connected to Wi-Fi, it's going to give you your preferred network in there. You're going to see that. But what you want to do instead of clicking at it right out, you want to hold down the option key first. So hold down option, then click on that little Wi-Fi symbol up there. And it's going to then open up the window again, but it's going to have a whole wealth of information right below your preferred network. It's going to have your IP address in there, your router, your security type, what, you know, what kind of security you're using, your BSSID, which is going to be kind of your identification number. That kind of stuff I'm going to kind of black out here because I don't want people to see that. But the other stuff below that is going to be important. So number one is the channel. It's going to give you the channel that you're on. Um, if you want to, you know, obviously fool around a channel, if you're having interference problems, change your channel. You can verify it's been changed. Um, but it also gives you, like, I'm at 5 gigahertz, you can see, so it tells you kind of the frequency you're at as well. That's something that's not that important, but some people want that information. But below that is really more important. You want to go down to the RSSI, see it down there, RSSI. And I'm going to go in here and open up a window, but that's basically your signal strength. And this is a negative number, so the closer to zero, the stronger the signal. So anywhere from about 30 to 50 is a good signal strength. 50 to about 85 or higher is, you know, when you get 80, 85, 90, that's actually really bad signal strength. So more things and more objects that you have in your room between you and that router um, is going to maybe make that thing go negative higher. So negative 85 will be a really bad signal. If you're down around like negative 15, negative 20, that's a really, really good signal. So that, that's one number you want to look at. Now the noise is the next one. So if we actually go back up here, I'm just going to click on this one more, one more time. Actually hold on the option key. Let me do it one more time here. So click on this and hold on the option key. So the next one is the noise. You can see it in there. And that basically is going to be uh, how much noise is in the room, uh, meaning like maybe some kind of interference with other electronics. Um, mine is going to be moving back and forth. It's around 91. So this is the exact opposite though. So what I just said before is the lower, like if a negative 30 is good and a negative 90 is bad for your signal strength, reverse that. So for noise, a negative 90 or a negative 80 is actually good. And then a negative 20 or a negative 10 means there's a lot of noise. So a background noise, we want less noise, so a lower negative number. So it's the exact opposite of what I just said. So if you have a negative 80, a negative 90, you have almost no noise in your room from your Wi-Fi. If you have a negative 20, you have a lot of noise. So that's, that's kind of what you want to do there. So you want to go ahead and remove different objects, electronics, and try to get that level to get better for you. That's another key. The second thing that I wanted to show you here really quickly, and let me go ahead and just click on this one last time, is the last thing is called the TX rate. And mine's can be around 390 to 400, but that's the speed you're connecting to your router. And you want to make sure that you're kind of connecting above whatever your internet connection speed is. So for instance, if you had only 100 megabytes per second there, and your internet was 200 megabytes per second from your host, you couldn't even connect fast enough to get that into your computer. So you want to make sure that value is higher than what you actually have connected to the internet. Um, but generally a 400 to like 800 is a good range to be in there, megabytes per second. So I kind of just wanted to show you what these, this, these numbers were all about. And that's my first tip number one. All right, so tip number two is going to be a good one. So stay with me here. So whenever you guys do a screenshot, you know how to do that. You do shift command four. It's going to bring open a little kind of little marker here and you can go ahead and pick the region you want to take a screenshot of, let go. And it's going to take a screenshot. You'll see it down here. You click on it and here's the screenshot. So it's going to save it over here on my desktop. Now, if I right click on this, you're going to see that it says get info here. You're going to see that this was saved as a PNG file. Most of the time it's saved as a PNG file and those tend to be really big files. So you can notice here, it's like about 12, one point, 
what is it here? 1.2 megabytes for that little teeny, you know, little square that I took there. So one thing you can do is if you don't want to have it always save as PNGs, you can change the format. You can save it as either a JPEG or a PDF, but there's a cool way to do it. So what you want to do is you want to click on the little magnifying glass and type in terminal and open up your terminal window. So I just did that here. So I have terminal open right here. Now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and there's a command you want to type in and I'll zoom in on it, but I'm just, I already have it actually in here. But basically it's going to be right there. It's defaults space right space com dot apple dot screen capture space type and then space PDF. So that PDF is the last part of it is what you want to change. So basically, you, you know, and if you watch me, I'll erase the last part and I want to actually make that a JPG. See how I just changed that last part to JPG? Now I'm going to go ahead and click enter just like that. And now what happens is it just kind of does nothing and you can go ahead and close terminal. But now watch this. Now if I do shift command four, um, it's going to give me that little screen capture device. I'm going to go ahead and take the same thing there. I'm going to take a little screenshot of my desktop. So I'm going to go down here and take a look at this new one now. And if I go over here to the one I just took and I look at it and I hit get info, you'll notice now all my screen captures are saved as a JPEG, not a PNG, but a JPEG. See it right here? And then look at the size of it, 66 kilobytes. The other one was 1.2 megabytes. So it's a lot smaller. It's saving in a different format. A little bit more compressed format, but it's better for screen captures in a lot of cases. And there you go. So in order to change it back, you go back into terminal and you can make that change right back. All right, and the third tip is very similar, but very useful. So when you take a screen capture, like I just did over here, you're gonna see it says screenshot, and then it's got the date and everything. That's the name of the file, see it there? But let's say you're doing a project where every screen capture you want, you wanna actually save it with a different name. You don't wanna have to go in and rename it. Well, there's a way to do that. So go ahead and open up terminal again over here, and uh, just type in terminal, and it's gonna open up your terminal screen. So go ahead and do that. And now the command that you want this time, and I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in here, so the command is going to be defaults space write space com dot apple dot screen capture space name space and then hello. Uh, actually in, in a parenthesis. So basically you see where hello is here. What you want to do is you want to go in here and you can change that hello to anything you want. So I'm going to say I'm going to name it Craig in there and I'm going to then end the quotes there. So now I see instead of hello it says Craig. So if I go ahead and just click enter there. Um, what you'll see happen now is if I take a screenshot, so I'm going to do shift command four, I'm going to go ahead and take that screenshot just like that. Now what we're going to do now is let's go ahead and close this and we'll see what it names it over here. Look at that. So if I look over here now, it's named Craig and then the date. So you can actually pre-name any screenshot you want um, by, by naming it like that through the terminal and then anytime you take it, it'll actually have that kind of preface as far as whatever you put in between the quotes. That's actually what's going to name the file. So in between projects, you can keep changing that name to whatever the project is and it'll actually save it like that for you on every screen capture, or every screen print that you do. So that's a good idea, right? And uh, you don't have to go back and change the name of it. Pretty good? You let me know. So let's wrap up the video. I just wanted to show people these three power, kind of power tips, I guess. Um, one thing I want to say too is if you're going to use terminal, definitely be very careful. Um, always back up your data before doing it. I'm not responsible if you screw something up. Um, you got to do your own research and uh, take, you know, obviously, just make sure you back things up. But terminal can be pretty messy if you mess things up. So don't, don't go fooling around too much in there and just follow the way things are supposed to be. You'll be okay. Um, beyond that, that's about my only disclaimer I can put in here. So we'll talk to everybody soon. I hope everyone's doing good in the new year. And we'll talk to you maybe in a couple of days. Peace.